Hi guys, Andy Blakely here from andyblakelydrums.com, Facebook. Um, thanks for watching some of my other videos. I thought I'd uh, switch position and do a more of a, a full frontal shot this time. Um, and I'm doing a... I was looking for things to do, and this is going to be really rushed because I don't want to make the video clip too long. Um, but if people... If it just invites questions and curiosity and some people haven't even seen this and they look at it and they like it or they like my interpretation of it... Um, That'd be great. What am I going on about? I'm going on about the new Vinnie Colaiuta clip whereby he's doing an album for Randy Waldman and he's playing the track The Six Million Dollar Man, which we all remember even over here in England from the 70s and the 80s. Very military theme and there's a military breakdown somewhere in the middle of the track maybe that someone's uploaded and it looks really difficult, really fast, super superhuman in itself actually. Six million dollar drumming for sure. Um, and I just thought, I wanted to look at it, I like rudiments, I think I know most of my rudiments, and I wanted to see what Vinnie Colaiuta had done in term, terms of sticking. Um, it's very polyrhythmic, it's very syncopated, there's a lot of fours within threes and twos within threes and threes within twos. I obviously not got time to get into all of that, so I'll blast through. I just, my impression of it was that it wasn't what you thought it would be in terms of sticking. He's gone for some very personal sticking choices, um, things you wouldn't think you would have done, flam taps where you maybe wouldn't have done them, or I don't know, different inverted paradiddles and all kinds of things make it really challenging. That combined with the speed of the video, I had it on YouTube. For those of you that don't know, you can click on YouTube and have it at half, half speed, 75% speed. So I'm going to try and record it at different speeds, nowhere near his speed, forget that. Uh, I'm human. So I can't play it that fast. I'm just going. I wanted to just do it really slow, quite an unprofessional video because I just want to throw it out there for people to pick threads out of or or bits they want to see that they like, the sound of or whatever. So I'm just thinking out loud. I'm going to get into it right away. Apologies for those who are not into rudiments this deeply. If you like it and you want to get into them, maybe some of the Charlie Wilcoxon books are a good place to start. NARD, National Association of Rudimental Drummers books are good to start with. George Lawrence Stone, as usual, Stick Control. There are some books you could check out very quickly on Google for that kind of thing. So here we go. It's predominantly triplets, but having said that, it does change quite a bit. Um, People know the clip, or you'll be checking out the clip. Someone has very kindly put the transcription scrolling in real time underneath as he actually plays. So I've transcribed my own thing from that purely for sticking. Uh, it starts out with two eighth note triplets, unusual sticking again. He's switching between two drums. I'm just going to keep it simple on the one drum for now. Maybe I'll get into it if somebody wants to check it out further. So straight away there you hear a seven stroke roll because he wants the accent on the single, I'm guessing. These are all my own, you know, suppositions, um, but I'm guessing. <laughs> Sounds very much like the original TV theme, if anybody remembers that kind of riff that was going on on the snare drum. So bar one. <laughs> now people who know it are already probably saying, no, he does a buzz roll on that last note. Yeah, he does a press roll on the A of four. So there's syncopation already beginning, even in bar one. Right. Now that ties over into the next bar. You'll have to rely on the transcription, which is fantastic on the video. I just want to get into the sticking and my own mental processes today for anybody who's interested in that. Um, now then you've got to pop that E of the next bar. It's one E, one. And then again, you've got a displaced seven. All double sticking. That gets you to beat two of bar two. So I'll go from the beginning again. I'm a little shaky, I need to warm up on it. Okay, so we see where that's going anyway. And then you got these crazy nested, they're, they're just 16th note triplets. 
but with a buzz on the first partial. And the sticking he uses, as far as I can see at speed, is... So you've got... Okay. So from bar one again... Now, beat, the last beat there of, of bar two, again, you'd think, oh, yeah, 16th note triplet, simple. But he doesn't go for that. He goes for either a double paradiddle or, as far as I can see, this sticking. Because he wants the single to pop out as the accent again. So not quite a double paradiddle but, or a paradiddle diddle. Singles and doubles combination, though, definitely. And what that does in bar three is pop you onto the left hand. Now again, you've got three triplets. Four, really, if you know your reading and your rhythm reading. Beat four of bar three is really only uh, but they're doubled. The last one's even doubled again to 32nd notes. Okay, so, and then it gets polyrhythmic with the snare because the accents are happening every fourth note, even though you're in triplets. It's... And then for that fourth beat, you're actually on the right hand again for another single accent. So to my eyes, to my reckoning, to my vision, he's, he plays like an inverted paradiddle. And you gotta watch the rhythm on this because it's a very sneaky bar, bar three. Here's bar three on its own. That gets you to the left hand on bar four. Bar four isn't bad, it's just a bunch of Piccadillys, 16th notes, sarsaparilla, Coca-Cola, Piccadilly, however you wanna think of that from a syllable point of view. Again, very similar to the original 70s theme. A lot of rudiments in this, though. This is bar four. You have a normal 16th note. And then fives, five stroke rolls. And then a, a flam on the A. He definitely doesn't do one on the last beat, probably because he's prepping up for a flam in bar five. So here's bar four. Get that? Here's bar three and bar four. Good as I'm going to get, guys. Well, I'll speed it up maybe a little later on. Um, okay, so bar six, one, two, three, four, no, bar five. Um, again, polyrhythmic. A lot of this is phrasing with the brass. Da, 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 da. Right, so you've got to get some of those accents to hit with the brass figures. Right. And then you've got another press roll. I think it's just with the left hand. He moves both, but doesn't seem to make contact. He just, I don't know, cover my vision again, but see what you think. Check it out. I get a left buzz. I'm sure someone will correct that if needed. So we've got Okay, so I'm gonna go from bar one to that bar. Okay, so we're into bar six. Bar six, again, rhythmically not bad. It's four beats of 16th note triplets. But if only life were that simple. It starts out like that, but I get the sticking for the first one as a standard six roll, six stroke roll sticking. I don't explain every single thing. You can just see what's going on there, yeah? Maybe it's wrong anyway. <laughs> Hope not. 
Okay, so that's standard six stroke roll. Then he gets into the Swiss Army triplets. Now, if you don't know what those are, you're gonna to need to check them out. They're pretty convoluted. Um, some people call it a collapsed double stroke roll because you've got really offset doubles. So he's definitely employing these in this bar, as far as I can see. So beat one. Then he does just a double accent. No flam. So that's beat two. Uh, sorry, half of beat two. Gets the flam in there on the, on the last half of beat two. Then he cleverly offsets it to, to syncopate onto the hand. Oh, uh, I can't do it. I can't talk and do it. One and a na na na, two and a na na na, I should count. That's what I'm getting there. So the whole of bar one, two, three, six is. Okay, snare's real loud in here. It's making me back off a little bit. Um, what do we got? Bar six. Okay. Bar seven. So that sticking from bar six should get you to another left-handed flam. So let's go from bar six again. And there's that polyrhythm again. It's very off-putting if you're not comfortable with the polyrhythmic idea. You're playing in triplets, but we're accenting every fourth note, so that's like a duple feel and a triplet feel. Both coexisting kind of thing, yeah? You could really throw your pulse off and your count off if you're not comfy with that. He definitely gets onto the left hand then for a whole run of 30 seconds, and it's interesting to watch how he's navigated himself through those 16ths. He's basically done Sorry to talk about him as if he's not here, but he's not actually. So uh, you've got, he's basically done paradiddle, diddle, paradiddle, diddle, paradiddle, as far as I can see, right? So you've got. And that's got to run right over into the next bar. And it's going to be humongously fast. This is, this is walking speed here. So what have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, bar seven and bar eight. You see, it starts with that seven again. And that's characteristic of the TV show. Okay, that's in there, right? So we definitely need to master sevens both ways to get around a lot of this. But once you've once you've got past that seven, uh, there, now you start the first run of paradiddle, little paradiddle, little paradiddle. And then you've got to get out of that at the back end of bar eight. And he does again an unusual sticking after the left. Uh, he does left, sorry, after the right, he does right again. Just to facilitate that very fast single. And another seven again there. Hopefully that makes more sense when you can get into analyzing the whole thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, bar seven and eight. rim shot in there but you get the idea and then again for bar nine and ten you're back on a left hand there's no way you can get a flam from those doubles right so he's going for a single as far as i can think and see and hope and pray uh right and again these two bars get pretty hectic pretty quickly You'd think he'd go for pure doubles, but he doesn't because he wants a single accent again. So he's got that, as far as I can tell, as a single, which makes him have to do an inverted paradiddle again. Nearly swore. Gotta keep it clean. 
Okay. And he keeps that going to do two more offset accents, which was very rhythmically confusing for me. I had to watch it about 14,000 times, but eventually it sunk in. So we've got... Uh, So that's the beginning of bar one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but beginning of bar 10. I've, I, I see this as four, two singles, then a double, just to get him on that left-right accent scheme that he pops out. So beat one of bar 10. And it works because then he does another seven. And then he just gets into. So that's straightforward enough at this speed, flam taps. Okay, so bar 10. Uh... Right. kind of what I'm getting. So I'm gonna, I've got that on one scrap of paper here. So I'm gonna go from the beginning really slow and try not to cock 10 bars up, okay? Oh, I did cock it up. I'll try it again. kind of where I'm at with that page, yeah? Then it gets, to be honest, a little easier, even though, it, even though it's very fast. You've just got the same polyrhythmic thing again. Now again, the stick in here, as I can see it, he does flam taps. When he, he didn't need to particularly, but he's gone for that, so you've got... So you end up right to left to get on to beat four. And then you get a bunch of those nested, very fast 30 second five stroke rolls. So you've got. You know, if that was in like 12 8 blues, you'd go. Or even a waltz feel. But. They've doubled the double, so it's four in the middle. And he does that a lot in this latter half of the solo as he's going out for something really much faster. So there we go. Uh, Bit polyrhythmic there that he's shifted the doubles. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Bar twelve. It's just an old polyrhythmic trick that you're implying a set of twos within a set of threes again there. Uh, the next bar is just solid four. I've got to sharpen up all the fives and everything, basically, but you get the concept. And then he flips it around. That's, again, another easy compositional device. Uh, and then the third beat is, again, much slower in comparison because it's just normal sixteenths. So... But again, a weird stick in, I get the inverted paradiddle is the easiest to do, personally for me, because you get the single accent and the other accent. So, 
Oh, God. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Our last beat's a bit of a snakey one, especially at tempo. It's like the 7 again, but within a triplet nested feel. And that accent's going to go have to have to go very quickly onto the final two bars. So let me try it from 13, 14, is it? And then he's out there. So again, some nested fives within the overall pulse of triplets in the last two bars. And again, you'd think you could go hand to hand. He doesn't seem that he does that after careful inspection of it. He seems to keep one hand doing the singles and then he's flamming out the accents or accenting within the flams by keeping everything fairly leading hand sticking and then he can pop those bass drums on for added emphasis. So uh, where am I going from? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. About 11 through to the end, yeah. some reason there's no bass drum on the last flam whether that's a mistake in oversight or absolutely intentional i don't know but uh, i missed one off anyway at the beginning so i'm going to try the whole thing one and two and up. oh it's a single I'm going to pick it up from there. bad um so you get the idea it's hard to do any slower than that it's hard to do any faster than that so um i'll try a little faster one Clearly, I'm a long way from the speed. It, it's a lot easier when you drum to the brass and the song. So try that at half, 50%, 75%. Um, so yeah, please check us out on uh, on Andy Blakely Drums Facebook page. I got a book out, Play Drums Today, with a lot of this kind of stuff in. Check that out if you would on the Facebook Drummers and Facebook, my own Facebook page, as I say. Um, and I'd like to thank uh, Agna Drumsticks in Switzerland for kindly sending over some Agna 5A ends. I've got some. Oh, let me just get them, guys, actually. A lot of beautiful sticks from Agna Swiss made. Lead, beautiful weight. I've got a, what have I got? I've got a Fusion Hickory, beautiful feel. Um, Avant Garde Hickory, beautiful feel again, great weight. 
good grip feel. Stick right in your hands where you need them. 5A, V. Normal, pretty normal length, shaft, neck, tip. So thanks again, Paul, for those. Um, I'm really enjoying working with those. They do sound great. I'm hoping to use them to further justice on this piece here. Um, but yeah, any questions, guys, just drop me a line. If you want to do a private FaceTime lesson on rudiments, or that's what your appetite for anything else. I'm actually going to try it one more time because I am feeling that I should just see if I can redeem myself and play that a little bit better. Okay, here's one more, guys. Um... Not bad. That would be a lot of fun if you could vamp it up with the brass and play along with the track. As I say, any queries, any questions, guys, be great to hear from people and maybe check the book out. Um, have a look at that as well. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs>